Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we have a really cool project and that's replacing the refrigerator in my RV. Uh, right now I have uh, uh, an old propane fired flame type refrigerator in the camper. Uh, Dometic and my trailer is about 10 years old right now and last summer I started having issues especially when it got a little bit colder out of it actually running. Uh, but the advantages are once I go and replace the refrigerator I'm going with a 12 volt DC compressor based refrigerator freezer which is really cool. So did some looking around and I'll show you what I chose here in a minute but uh, Thanks for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, look at my playlist uh, that I've got on RV Solar. Um, and I'll put the link down below of my other videos where I added 1500 watts of solar onto my 2001 Fun Finder. I gotta say it right. Um, and it's just amazing. And I added Battleborn batteries in. I've got 500 watt amp hours of uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. And then I have a Renogy 3000 watt pure sine wave converter. Uh, also added, so I have so much extra power, added an induction cooktop for the outdoor kitchen and just absolutely love it. But I have all this excess power, so I thought I'd go to a 12 volt DC refrigerator replacement for my old Dometic. So uh, let's take a look at uh, how I'm doing it. So I have the RV in storage for the winter. It's January right now. So I've already got the cover off of the uh, refrigerator and uh, this is what it's looking like in here. And this is an absorption type refrigerator. You guys all probably have one of these and it's got all this ammonia and all this contraption going and, and pretty much you have a flame that's burning into this chamber here. And it's a constant flame burning when it's running and uh, heat's going out the heat stack. So I suppose, and I've read on the interweb, that there's been a lot of RV fires where a fire has started here and uh, created a lot of damage to the RVs, even the motorhomes. So the advantage of compressor based is I have all this extra power. When it's running, it's only taking seven amps. And then uh, when it's on idle condition, it's only taking one amp, which is like nothing compared to all the power I have available to me. Uh, but then not using any more propane. And when you're going down the road, they recommend you shut off your propane tanks, but then how are you supposed to keep your stuff cold when you're driving for seven, eight hours? And the absorption type refrigerator takes a while to cool down initially too, uh, compared to a compressor based, and you're supposed to keep this level. So um, I'm pulling into a lot of Walmart parking lots, who knows where, a brother-in-law's driveway, and uh, I leave it connected to the truck. And I don't have the opportunity to really level out the trailer and you're supposed to keep this refrigerator level for optimum performance. With a compressor, I don't have to worry about that. Uh, the first thing I did, and I didn't video this, but uh, your propane line basically comes right up here and connects into your ignition valve. And then disconnect that and what I did is bought a 3 8 plug. This is from Home Depot uh, flare plug and I'll dig it out. All right, so here's the flare plug that I have, and uh, just looks something like that, and that's going to cap off. It's hard to do when I'm holding the camera, but uh, you get the idea. The flare nut goes on there. Make sure it's good and tight, and that's going to cap it off, and then you're done. So the next thing is to remove the 12 volt wires, which I'm going to reuse for the new refrigerator because it's running on 12 volts. And here's my two wires for the power right here, and I'll just reuse those, tap it in. And then this refrigerator also runs on 115 volts. The 12 volt on the absorption refrigerator is only for the ignition and the electronics board. That's all it's doing. So I cannot run this absorption refrigerator just on 12 volts. It's either 115 or propane, which is the majority of the Dometic uh, refrigerators that are out there. So. That'll just be the power for the new refrigerator because the refrigerator takes not that much current. And um, then it goes on 115, which provides a coil up in here. Very inefficient uh, heater coil, basically running off to 115, and it takes a lot of juice to do it. And then typically over here, you have a plug, this regular wall socket plug, and I'll just disconnect that. And I won't be using that anymore. But, uh, 
so that's it. So let's go inside. Here we are inside the RV, and this is the old Dometic unit. It's 10 years old, and it ran on gas or electric, 115 volts. And the advantage of the new refrigerators, too, is that they're so much bigger inside. Um, the one I've ordered from RecPro is 10 cubic feet, which is considerably larger than this unit. The depth's going to be greater because you don't have all that ammonia coil stuff and all that stuff on the back going up the back of the refrigerator, so now they can make the shelves deeper. And then this goes bye-bye. All these fins here for the cooling uh, goes bye-bye. And then also, I am going to be real happy when I get rid of this over here. It's a thermistor that slides up and down one of the fins. Very hard to regulate the temperature in this, arc, in this, in this unit. Um, and I actually put uh, paper clips <laughs> to hold it from sliding as the vibration down the road was moving the thermistor up and down the fin. So a really crude way. Now the new way with my compressor based is I'm going to have a real nice knob and control. It also, I believe, has a blower inside. Um, so when I take this out, I'll take the new one. We'll do a side-by-side -side comparison and show you the increase in depth. But I'm really looking forward to getting rid of this. All right, so the new refrigerator is going to be, I think, top... The bottom is 60 inches, which is going to bring me up in here, and this is the closest I could find. So my Dometic only comes up to about 53 or 4 inches. So uh, I knocked this panel out of the top up here. Get it out of there. And uh, I have plenty of room up in here. And all it looks like I need to do is take my plunge cutter and uh, cut out the corners right here and then this center will go away and I'll have plenty of room to put the, the taller refrigerator in so looks like I just need to pop off this cover here okay a little connector that comes loose bye bye And then it looks like I have mounting screws. If you can see those or not, there's one there, one there. I think what I'm going to do next, though, I'm going to take the doors off. That'll make it lighter to get it out of here and smaller. And uh, so that's going to be next. All right, got my refrigerator doors off. It's easy to do. You just take a couple screws out here. And then this one also, you can reverse it, pull those plugs out, reverse the doors. But it looks like I've got a couple mounting holes up top here. Just a couple uh, screws to take out down the side, a couple on the bottom right down in here. And that's going to, I think, loosen it up. So I went on the interweb and I was looking around for videos on how to replace your propane refrigerator and put the new DC compressor based uh, in. And I, I couldn't find anything anywhere. I found a lot of van ones where they had the little baby refrigerators, you know, with the propane absorption type and then going to a compressor, but not a full-size one like this. I could not find anywhere. So uh, this might be the first here. So I'm going to get these screws out and see if I can jiggle this forward and uh, get this refrigerator out of the hole. Man, this is pretty easy, actually. Just two screws up here going into the wood up top, two on the bottom right down here, right and left, and... Uh, just get from behind, push it, and it's sliding right out, right out and in. So uh, I'm going to go get a moving blanket, put it on the floor, and uh, go get my wife and trick her into helping me lift this thing out, which it doesn't appear to be that heavy. I mean, I could just take one thumb on it and rock it. So, so that's good news. And then uh, it should fit out the door. It's 24 inches, so... Uh, I'll get everything cleaned up in here, cut that cross brace out with my plunge cutter. Got to knock a panel out up there. Hey, we've got a problem here. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. Oh, man. Just realized something. So when I look at the dimensions of this refrigerator, I am about, oh, over 24 inches deep to the coil, right to there. 
And the challenge is my door opening is 24 inches, but the door has a flange on the inside here for the screen, screen door. And if I look at that dimension, it is 22 and a half right to there. So the text that are replacing refrigerators, there's no way to get this out anywhere. What they're going to have to do is, uh, what I'm going to do is take out the door frame and then I'll have my, my 24 inch opening right there. So to do that, all right, so I was able to get the top rail off. That's a drip rail for rain, I guess, to deflect it around the top of the door frame. So that came off just with four screws. And then down the side, they had this trim piece covering the bolt holes. So I was able to pry it off. I'll have to do some straightening. But uh, that trim piece is covering all the bolts or the screws all along here. So all I need to do is take screws out and then this frame should just tilt right off. I'll take the doors off first, um, lighten up the frame a little bit, and then I'll have my 24 inch opening to get the refrigerator in and out. Got the face frame off, so that's an accomplishment. Now I am 23 inches from the face to the back of the coil back here and the heater tower flue, whatever you want to call it. So good to go to get it out the door. So I got the door off and here's the frame that uh, created my issue here. It just came off and what you do is uh, take all the screws off. I took a little putty knife and pried all along. It's got butyl rubber, uh, this real gummy soft stuff here. And just pry it out at the bottom first. The threshold is actually connected to the side of the frame. So that all comes out as one unit, pry it out at the bottom, work your way up to the top, and then it just comes out. So now I have my 24 inch opening. So here's the new refrigerator, 12 volt DC compressor based. And even though I'm putting this in an RV, you could put this in the garage of a summer home or you know whatever you got there running solar power with a couple batteries and just run it off of the car battery, 12 volt DC. So uh, it's either for an RV or you could just leave it as a standalone unit. But look at the difference between the two units here. Wow, height is considerably more and the amount of space inside, I think this is 11 cubic feet or 10.7, something like that. But wow, look at the difference in the depth. So there's what I was. And this is what it's going to be. Nice glass shelves, switch just like a residential refrigerator, crisper drawer in the bottom, and the freezer's huge. And it looks like there's a, a fan in the back here um, too to circulate the air, which this one was pretty much just convection. But look at the difference here in the depth. So, man, this is going to be nice when I get it in. So. The next thing to do is take off of the uh, the grid on the back or the uh, little metal thing here. And then I need to drill two holes down into the uh, support bracket across the bottom. And then I'm just going to use a 5 16 inch lag bolt into my 3 quarter inch plywood deck and that, that'll hold it and that'll be good. Then after that, positive and negative, 12 volt DC. And um, I already got those wires. I'll just make a pigtail onto what I have and I'm ready to go, fire it up. So next thing is uh, get one of my neighbors to help me lift this in. So here's what it looks like in the back of the new refrigerator. So that's compressor. That's absorption with an open flame in it. All this contraption with ammonia and I think there's water in there, all kinds of good stuff. But again, absorption, open flame, compressor, 12 volt DC. The refrigerator is in. Man, this thing is quiet. I don't know if you can hear that. You can barely hear it running. 
pretty amazing. Got my holes drilled into the frame, 5 16 inch lag bolts ready to go once I put the weather seal around it. I'll run those down and uh, got my positive and negative hooked up right here onto the connectors. Simple. Then I have uh, the shield, like the grid shield to go up back on here again once I get the lag bolts run down. I'll do that last. Wow, this turned out amazing. And this is the Everchill 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt DC refrigerator. And I got it from Rec Pro, and I think it was $11.49 uh, with free shipping right to my door. So got it all sealed in all the way around the edges so it's airtight from the outside. And uh, man, the freezer is just huge compared to what we had before it also has a turbo fan in the back and then check this out nice glow to it crisper drawer in the bottom and i'll put the link uh to the rec pro site uh, in the description down below uh, along with the uh the part number of this and anything else that i use so uh uh, also, when it was running, I'm only drawing, I was monitoring it on my Victron Energy battery monitor for my lithium batteries, and uh, I was only running 4.9 amps or so. So very low current draw, and that's what it was running when it was off. It was only like 10, 15 watts, something like that. So also, if you want to see uh, all the solar and the 3000 watt inverter and all the Battleborn lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries and everything else I did with DC to DC chargers. Uh, I'll put the link in the description and uh, check out my playlist on the RV where I modified the outside kitchen to an induction cooktop and uh, a bunch of other stuff. So check out all my playlists, my hot rods, my e-bikes, uh, just a wide variety of different YouTubes that I've done. Please like and subscribe and uh, pushing for a thousand subscribers, getting very close. So I appreciate everybody tuning in. If you have any questions or any comments on, on the DC refrigerator that you're using in your RV or if you did an upgrade, uh, please leave comments down below. I'd like to see your comments. I read every one of them. But uh, that's it for now. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. And thanks for watching.